Health is the most precious commodity we all yearn for, we all search for, and we all want to maintain. To define health, we have to eliminate the definition of disease. We have to see where is the breakdown that leads to deviation from health, that gradually leads to loss of function and ultimately to degenerative disease and early death. We know that the most important component of health is looking at the cells and their metabolism and how they thrive in their environment, which is the tissues. If we can maintain the health of the tissues and the cells within them, we are going to maintain health. What are the four tissues that we strive to maintain in our body? The first one is epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue refers to the lining of our organs, the lining of our skin, the lining of our digestive tract. Every cell that is in our glands, our hormonal glands, is uh, an epithelial cell because it is lining the tubes or the pipes or the surfaces of the body. Epithelial cells are extremely functional and crucial for our vitality, not just hormones not just protection, but the immune system within the epithelial tissue relates to and depends on the health of the epithelium throughout our body. So epithelial cells are probably among the most important functioning cells that we need to maintain. Unfortunately, most of them are not too close to their source of nutrients and oxygen. Most of them are removed from the circulation that brings them the vital product that they need for their survival. So epithelial cells can easily become degenerated and we see that with the skin as it ages. We see it with the surface that loses its smoothness over time. We see it with changes that could lead to skin cancer and ultimately to other skin disease and aging. We also see it in the digestive system when lack of circulation to the epithelium of the digestive tract causes problems with digestion, with absorption, with assimilation, leads to leaky gut syndrome, to autoimmune disorders, to inflammation, to uh, psychosis, problems in the brain. We depend on the integrity of our epithelial layers that are lining our organs and lining our tubes everywhere. The second form of tissue that we have is connective tissue. This is mostly the supportive tissue that holds everything together. We have connective tissue which is fat, we have connective tissue which is blood, connective tissue which is bone, and connective tissue which is um, the immune system. So connective tissue is generally amorphous and it requires healthy circulation so that the few cells that are active are going to be able to manufacture the ground substance, the extracellular matrix that holds everything together to support our bones and our fatty tissue and to support our blood and basically to support our skin and to support our cartilage. These are all connective tissue. In many places, connective tissue is not getting enough circulation as it is. For example, the joint, the joint capsules, the cartilage in the joint are not getting enough circulation. They only get their nutrients and their oxygen through diffusion. And the harder it is for them to get diffusion, the faster they degenerate and lose their ability to heal. So we must have healthy circulation supporting all of our connective tissue if we want to prevent degeneration, joint degeneration, arthritis, if we want to prevent osteoporosis, if we want to prevent immune dysfunction, because even the immune system as it's manufactured in the bone marrow requires healthy circulation. The next type of tissue is the nervous tissue. Nerves are themselves a tissue because the brain and spinal cord, for example, 
are concentrated areas of neurons which are themselves extremely dependent on capillaries that provide them with nourishment and oxygen and removes the waste material that allows them to survive and to function. So any function of the nerves can be affected negatively when the circulation is slightly obstructed or constricted and there is insufficient blood with its content coming to those extremely sensitive organs, for example the ears, for example the eyes, the senses of, you know, that we are so proud of like being able to see and hear and taste and smell are all depending on the integrity of tiny neurons the nerve cell that bring information to our brain for its own interpretation of what we have just senses. Imagine what we feel when we start losing our eyesight and when we start having ringing in the ears or other problems having to do with lack of circulation to support those tiny important organ of sense that are dependent on nerves and nervous tissue. Imagine what happens to the brain and to our mood and to our behavior and intelligence and cognitive function when we are losing the nutrient support that comes with the capillaries to the nervous system to provide our nerves with what they need to function. The last tissue of the four is muscle tissue. The muscles require continuous steady state blood support so that the muscles can perform when, whether it's athletics, whether it's sports or running away, fighting or even relaxing and healing after sports. We must have sufficient oxygen in the muscles to create energy. All cells in the body must create energy, not just the muscle cells, but we know especially that we feel fatigued and we even feel pain in the muscles and elsewhere in the body when we don't have enough oxygen to manufacture energy efficiently and as a result we start making energy without the availability of oxygen. It's called anaerobic metabolism which leads to the formation of all types of acids, not just lactic acid that we all know about but others and which leads to the sense of pain and weakness which a lot of people feel in their muscles when they have fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome or other conditions affecting energy production or ATP production within the cell. To create energy efficiently we must have regular supply of oxygen. This depends on circulation. Also we need steady supply of nutrients like magnesium and other nutrients like minerals and vitamin and antioxidants without which our mitochondria, the little organs in the cell that make ATP, are going to be damaged. Oxidative stress we call this and then we can't make energy anymore and we start suffering the effects of pain and we can't heal as fast as we want. We see that with diabetic conditions like sores and diabetic neuropathy where the nerves are being affected in the legs but also the skin is changed. Everything is affected when there is insufficient circulation. So what we need to support all four tissues is circulation. And the most important component of the circulatory system is the capillaries. Not the large arteries that are supported by the heart that pumps blood through them. But the smaller arterioles, the capillaries and the smaller venules, on both sides of the capillary system, there are small blood vessels with muscles around them. And those muscles can push the blood into the capillary system and can pull the blood away from the capillary system. If they don't function, we have something called obstruction or stasis insufficient movement of blood, then we don't have enough movement of oxygen and nutrient to support our tissues and our cells start degenerating or dying and lose their capacity for self-healing. They start degenerating and many of them can die. We need those muscles in the small arterioles and venules to be contracting in a specific rhythm 
that allows the pushing and pulling of the blood through the capillary system. This can be done through walking, through movement, through healthy nervous system that keeps sending appropriate messages to the blood and uh, to the blood vessels and to the muscles. But today, most people are not able to do that because of stress, because of pollution, toxins, because of insufficient movement, because of ergonomics, sitting a long time, having one part of the body stuck, which has been shown already that this stasis leads to cancer. Lack of movement and oxygen leads to cancer. That's why people who sit a lot increase the risk of having cancer of the pelvic area. And that's why people who con constrict the blood circulation around the breast with very tight bra can increase the risk of breast cancer. So we need to allow this flow and movement and today for too many hours we don't allow this to happen. So what do we do? We need to figure out what instruments or machines or physiotherapeutic modalities will increase circulation. And there are several devices in the market that could help us compensate for what we're not doing on our own anymore because we're no longer walking around all day trying to gather our food. Somebody gets it for us, some farmer, and some truck, and some supermarket, and we just have to spend a few hours a week to get our food. So we are immobile and we're stationary trying to make the money necessary to buy that food instead of actually collecting it ourselves. What do we do? We have to look at the scientific literature to find which devices, which instruments have been proven through scientific publications that actually measured results with those specific devices, not with some other device that might be available competing on the market, but the one machine that has actually been tested and rigorously studied and published in rep reputable research institution. And there is such a machine today that um, has been proven to increase dramatically the blood flow through the capillaries as well as pushing and pulling and contracting the musculature surrounding the arterioles and venules, increasing perfusion of fresh new blood with fresh new nutrients and oxygen throughout the entire body. All four types of tissues are benefiting from that. And when that machine is able to bring this benefit within just five to eight minutes, that is an amazing achievement that could compensate for all these hours of inactivities. If you can lie down for just two times, for eight minutes each, and get this amazing potential restored, imagine how much faster you can regenerate after injuries, how much better you can perform in athletics and sports and competitions, how much better your mind can function and your cognitive function and reduce negative impact on the immune system when the blood can support and bring the immune cells to the tissues that need their help. Every aspect of your body will benefit. Every cell within every tissue will start thriving like it was supposed to in nature. And then you can start taking health for granted which is something we do as children when our circulation is still very good and when we're moving all the time, at least until recently when texting became very common, we can start taking health for granted, we can enjoy life and not even think about health anymore because health will become the precious commodity that we all deserve to possess for the rest of our long and productive life.